The trouble in China continues. New home prices in the world's second largest economy fell in July for the second month in a row, adding to concerns a growing property crisis will further slam a struggling economy. At the eye of the storm is troubled developer Country Garden, which missed bond payments this month. And now, according to Bloomberg, a large trust could also be approaching default. This morning, the People's Bank of China stepped in to inject the largest amount of short-term cash since February. Joining us now is Dennis Unkovic, Meyer Unkovic and Scott partner. Dennis, thanks so much for joining us this morning. So first off, I guess from your perspective, how much worse could it get for China's economy? Diane, I think it could get a lot worse. Let me just give you one statistic. 70% of the household wealth held by the normal Chinese people is in real estate. When real estate goes down, it just doesn't affect the markets. It affects everyone in China. So as one of your former guests has said, I have never been this concerned about Chinese economy in my life. Are we witnessing the makings of a lost decade for China? Well, if you go back to the mid-1980s, Japan was going to be number one. It was going to control the world. So between 1986 and 1992, it went through its bubble period. But it hit a situation pretty much like today, Brad. Uh, a lot of money was invested in real estate. Real estate prices went crazy. And then all of a sudden, there was a collapse because China, I'm sorry, Japan then suffered from deflation. So their Nikkei, which was their stock market in 1992, which was about 30 or 32,000, dropped to 8,000. And really, I think it's probably only been within the last year when it's gone back up. Deflation in Japan looks a lot like you could see in China. And then, uh, Dennis, I want to ask you, just in terms of, so the real estate sector, the latest shoe to drop, if you will, there uh, in China, what does China need to do? Do they then have to turn to households to stimulate their economy, or is there not enough there there? Good question, Diane. Uh, two things. No, there is not enough there there, in my opinion, for the Chinese to deal with it. The fact that they dealt with the 10 basis points and last week said to real estate companies, we're going to give you another year to pay off on your debts. It's not enough. Um, I think it would take significant intervention by the Chinese at this point. It hasn't come. Uh, I guess yesterday, or Wednesday, but on Monday there was a meeting of the Politburo, which is the senior grueling group in China, and they looked at this situation. They said, we're going to work on this. We're going to deal with it. At this point, I think the Chinese leadership has done too little. Hopefully, it's not too late. Dennis, a uh, friend of the show, Matt Maley from Miller Tayback, said in his morning note, we're getting very close to removing the word potential from the term potential contagion. I would love to get your perspective on that. And if so, and if that is to be true, then what are the parts of the world, what are the parts of the stock market even, when you think about U.S. companies and international companies that rely on China for some of their growth and additionally some of their partnerships to everything from manufacture to sell into the economy, how could that impact them further? Brad, let me take that in two parts. First of all, the first people or the first countries will, to be hurt significantly will be those in Southeast Asia, because they not only sell a lot of stuff to China, but the Chinese have orders coming back and forth. I think that their markets will be hit first. As we know, the U.S. economy is fairly healthy today, but eventually a weak China exporting less and importing less from the U.S. is definitely going to affect the markets. And Dennis, I want to ask you about that move that China made this week about uh, the reverse of pulling back the curtain, uh, kind of closing the curtain on that uh, data on employment. Uh, what should we make of that? I mean, you know, we know China is obviously not a democracy, so there is some there is an opaque nature there in general. Uh, but how how concerning is that? And are we concerned enough about that? Diane, in the best of times, China has never been transparent. Mm -hmm. It's been a little bit more transparent recently. But I think what you're referring to is Chinese youth employment, yeah. which which is under 25, I think is about 21 or 22 percent now, which is at an all-time high. 
When the Chinese saw that, that's the kind of news that I think the central government really doesn't want to have out there. So the semi-transparent China has become very opaque at this time. And that's really typical for the Chinese. Whenever you see, uh, for example, during COVID, when the Chinese economy was dropping in 2021 and into 22, the quarterly estimates of the growth of what would come out in China were simply weren't brought out by the government. And so they are not happy to have bad news out there, and I think this is a good example, Diane. In a series of shocking moves that have been made by the government with regard to and response to the economic data that they are seeing, what is the next shoe to drop from your perspective? The next shoe to drop is I think that their real estate market is going to get even worse. There's a Chinese trust company called Zhongju, if I said that correctly, but as a trust company, it's, it's a shadow bank. In banks in China today pay you one or one and a half percent if you deposit money in there. But these shadow banks, the trust companies as they're called, will pay you six or seven or eight percent. Zhang Zhu announced yesterday or Monday, Monday or Tuesday, whatever day it was, that they were not going to be able to pay back their obligations to their folks. They, Zhang Zhu is an example of a trust company that has one trillion yuan or renminbi money sitting there. So if you're an average Chinese person, you have a lot of your money invested with them, and then you see the real estate market dropping. It's really very serious. I, I, I do not see a quick end or a, a quick improvement to what we see, Brad. Dennis, thanks so much for taking the time, providing some insight and perspective here this morning on a very large matter that everybody in the investment and economic community should be paying close attention to. Dennis Unkovich, who is the Meyer Unkovich and Scott partner. Thanks so much for the time.